world, where it's natural, supernatural. My guests operate in a miracle mandate from God, and their passion is to equip you to walk in that same miracle mandate. Are you ready to be activated in miracles? I know you are. Next on It's Supernatural. Is there a supernatural dimension? A world beyond the one we know? Can we tap into ancient secrets of the supernatural? Can our dreams contain messages from heaven? Is God ready to bring a tsunami wave of healing onto planet Earth today? Sid Roth has spent over 40 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid for this edition of It's Supernatural. Well, uh, I, I have uh, uh, Rob for the first time on the show, and Alice Cresswell, who's been a guest several times, and uh, I see how God has put the two of you together. When you first saw your wife touched by the Spirit of God, Rob, between the two of us, <laughs> ah, you can listen. <laughs> What'd you think of, did you, did you think she went off the deep end? Tell me the truth, now, come on. <laughs> Come on. Well, I had to be honest. <laughs> I, I, I thought well, that's really good for Alice, but I didn't really feel like it was for me. Whatever caused you to join this wild woman? I needed my own encounter. I needed my own revelation. And also said I needed some courage. Is there hope for all of us to operate the way you and Alice operate? Yes. Uh, the love, the power, even the miracle power of God is available to all that come to him. And, and then a lot of people ask, so what's the big deal about miracles? I guess if I need one, that's a big deal. But why the emphasis on miracles? Why is your emphasis on miracles? Well. Jesus, everything Jesus said is important, but occasionally he said, no, this is very important. And this is one of those verses, John 14, verse 12. He said, anyone who believes in me will do the miracles that I've been doing. I think that makes miracles pretty essential for the believer's life. Well, I can tell you what uh, my experience, and I'm sure your experience is, I don't care whether someone is a Muslim, an Orthodox Jew, a Hindu, uh, a religious Christian. One miracle settles the argument. Yeah, we've seen that a lot. Yeah. Hey, well, you just got back from some ministry trips. Tell me some of the mir uh, miracles. Oh, we've been saw. we've been to some different places. We've been to a. a Native American Reservation in Idaho, been to California, Germany, the UK, of course. And we've seen, we saw a lady with multiple sclerosis start walking. She actually walked up the stairs. We've seen cancer heal, tumors disappear, metal disappear out of people's bodies. This is one guy called Tim that I've got to tell you about because he basically, he was in the US military in the 1980s and he had a terrible accident in the military. He was in charge of the tanks. So Tim, he sits there, he goes to start the tank, and as he starts it, he gets this tremendous electric shock, and he's electrocuted. There's, there's like a lightning bolt that people see. He sees blue arcing from his fingers. He actually, he, he wakes up hours later in the military hospital, and they, the doctor comes and says, you should be dead. You, you can't you take that amount dead. of electricity. But his whole body was on fire. Now, after some time, that subsided, but he realized he had no feeling in his whole body, apart from his thumb and his forefinger on one hand. But his whole body was numb. He also got tremors, so his hands shook so much he couldn't drink from a normal cup. He had to have a lid on. His, he had brain damage because of it. It affected his hearing, his sight. He couldn't write anymore. He couldn't read anymore. And it, he turned away from God because of that and other things in his life. Now, we fast forward to our, one of our recent trips in 
Texas, Houston, Texas, he came to the workshop there, and as he comes to the workshop, we activate people yes. to pray for each other. So a young guy comes right over now. and starts to pray for yes. Tim, and he's aware of, he, is, he describes it like an inner tube full of power around his head, and it just works its way down over his body, it's the Holy Spirit. And as it goes, the Holy Spirit goes down over his body, his, his brain, the brain damage disappears, his brain comes back to normal, his hearing comes back, his eyesight, he gets all the feeling. How long was this all taking place? Well, he'd been, he'd been disabled for 33 years, this took, like, I don't know, 30 seconds, I don't know, a minute. It was very fast. And it goes down over his body. He gets all the feeling back in his body. The tremors in his hands stop. Everything comes back to normal. I'm healed. In the lunch break, he goes, he takes his shoes and socks off and he walks on the grass in his bare feet. And you know what, he gets so, he, he gives his life back to the Lord after 25 years and now he's doing miracles. He's seeing tremendous miracles. Now, <laughs> Rob, uh, you have a passion. You've written a book on it. You teach on it all the time. I explain uh, what you mean by the, the threefold miracle mandate. Well, a mandate is an authoritative command or a go and do it, like Jesus gave his disciples in Matthew 28. But we know that Jesus demonstrated amazing miracles, many different kinds of miracles, healings, deliverance, authority, but they are rooted in the blessings that God gives mankind in Genesis 1 and 2. Now those blessings, very quickly, are the blessings of, prov the blessing of provision, the blessing of divine healing or wholeness. That's all in the beginning. It's all in the blessings. beginning, uh, and the blessing of authority because he delegates authority to us to take care of what he's given us. Now we know that this is, this is lost tragically when Adam and Eve disobey God and these blessings then they manifest as curses. They become lack, they become sickness, they become um, slavery to God's enemy. Hallelujah, Jesus comes as the Messiah to win those and to reverse the curse, to win those blessings back, which he does victoriously. <laughs> Yet, Rob, most Christians do not act as though the curse has been reversed with the miracles, provision, uh, all, all of the things that were originally given to us and purchased back by Jesus. Why is that? Because we have an inheritance. The, the Bible teaches that we, as Christians, as sons of God, we have an inheritance, but we have to contend for it. Hold that thought, Rob and Alice operate, as you've seen, in revelation, not just information that will solidify the threefold miracle mandate in your life. Next. We now return to It's Supernatural. You two really have got our studio audience going. <laughs> but, but Rob, uh, briefly summarize the threefold miracle mandate. And I, I really like that word, mandate. It's a command. Whoa. <laughs> God blesses mankind with, with three blessings. Now, provision gives us our sense of security. Wholeness gives us our sense of love and acceptance. And the authority gives us our sense of significance. God created us like this. All people need these things. They, they need security. They need acceptance. They need significance. Everyone wants this. It's how we're made. When Adam and Eve uh, distrust God and disobey him, they look outside of God for these things. And that's why they release the curses. He has found this pattern of three all over the Bible of this miracle mandate. So, and what he's saying is in the wilderness, there was that same pattern of three. Explain that now. The same tempter, the same devil that came to Adam and Eve. This is why Jesus is called the second Adam, 
because he has to go through the same test. But Jesus trusts his heavenly father implicitly for all these things, for his security, for his acceptance and uh, for his significance. He's victorious. He leaves the wilderness in the power of the spirit and he goes on to have uh, an overflow in his life of miracles, of provision, of healing and of authority. So, Alice, is this what you're looking for people that you equip that when they understand and get the revelation of the three, threefold miracle mandate, that they would go in explosive power of God? Yeah, because the, the message is it's a wonderful revelation, but it's so simple. And when they get it, they, they can go and do the same things. We had a, a, la a young lady come into our shop one time called Lisa. And she was actually, she had a powerful um, business, but it was actually tapping into the wrong power. She was involved in the occult. And, but she was attracted by our sign outside our shop that said free healings and miracles. And she went in not wondering what it was all about. She gets prayed for and she recognizes the true power of God. She goes back, she goes back to her business. She's actually doing a Reiki healing session, which is counterfeit healing, not through Jesus. In the room doing the session, she's watching all these spirits and she thinks Jesus is there doing this universal energy, energy healing. But then she has a vision of the real, the true Jesus who walks into stop the room and says, what stop doing. what you're doing. And she's taken aback awesome. and she realizes it's, it's, it's the true Jesus. She's been living a counterfeit, like a, living a lie all these years. So she ends up giving up her whole business. She gives her life to Jesus. And she now, she's at a ministry school and she's helping other people who are involved in new age and occult practices to, to follow Jesus. <laughs> Now, Rob, you had a very serious, very personal uh, experience in the area of provisions. What happened? That's right. This is going back nearly 20 years um, where we, we had a, a young family. We had two young kids and uh, we'd got into some debt problems for various reasons. Um, it's a very common thing, isn't it? We'd remortgaged our house and we were in trouble. Now, and unfortunately, I, there are a lot of people relating to what you're saying right yeah, now. Yes, so as a young man, I'm, I remember, I've got a vivid memory of getting up in the morning. I used to like to go running and it's raining and I'm uh, running through the rain. And what can you do? I remember just crying out to God, please deliver me and my family from this crushing debt. And God did an amazing thing. I wish I could reach out to that young man jogging through the rain and tell him it's going to be all right. It's going to be better than all right because God's going to do something amazing. And what happened was we thought we should put the house on the market, but if we sold the house, we would still have been in some debt. But the Holy Spirit said, don't sell it. So we tried to be obedient and we lived by faith every month, waiting and waiting and waiting. And after 11 months, the Lord then said, now sell the house. Now, what we didn't realize is if we'd sold the house 11 months previously, we still would have been in debt. But over those 11 months, the price of the house rose. It just escalated so much over 11 months that when the Lord said, now sell the house, not only did we pay off our five mortgages, half a million dollars wow. worth, but we had enough money to buy a, a, a wonderful house cash, a car cash, and took our family to ministry school for a year in America and we, with the cash that was left. <laughs> There's so many people watching right now and they say, why them? Why not me? Answer them. If you're in that situation right now, we, we know how that feels. And it can be a hard road, but we have to trust God. We have to have that faith that just puts ourselves in his hands. And it may not turn out like you may think it might turn out. We thought we might get a check through the post. It didn't work like that for us. We had to let go of what we thought was a gift of God in order to have the real treasure. And that's what he's going to do for you. So I pray, Lord, for breakthrough, financial breakthrough, whatever it takes to deliver people watching into that place of provision in Jesus' name. When we come back, I want Rob and Alice to pray for miracle breakthroughs in every area of your life. 
and pray to activate the threefold miracle mandate just for you when we return. We now return to It's Supernatural. Okay, I told you they were going to activate you right now. Alice, teach us three simple steps to activate our people. Well, I'm going to do it through the example of Mark. He, this guy, he was a property tycoon. And when the 2008 financial crash happened, his, him and his family lost almost all of their wealth. And because he hadn't, his foundation was on his wealth, he had nothing to stand on. And he really, his life sort of spiraled out of control. And he was drinking heavily alcohol. He was using hard drugs. He was watching pornography. You know, his wife would actually, she was a believer, and she would lay outside his office while he was doing all these things, and she would be praying for him. Now, his sister gets sick, and she invites him to go to a healing conference to help her. He decides to go. But it was actually she wanted to help him so he goes to this healing conference and he recognizes his need for God at the conference now that's the first step you've got to really know that you need a savior know that you are a sinner you need a savior we all do he gets vulnerable and he humbles himself that's another step we need to do that before God and then he they pray with him he gets a curse broken, broken off his life, and he ends up getting delivered of many demons. He comes to, about 45 minutes later, like a new person. He gives his life to Jesus. He invites Jesus to come into his life. That is an important step you've got to do, and that we all need to do. And then, since then, his life has been completely transformed. Now he bases his life on the rock, who is Jesus, and he has his ministry, a real prophetic ministry, and he reaches out to other people too. watching if you do not know Jesus then you just speak out to him now just he's, he's in the room with you so just say Jesus I want to give you my life please come into my life forgive me of all my sin all the things that I've done wrong and I want to come into my life and I believe that you are the son of God and that you rose from the dead and come and fill me with your Holy Spirit I want to follow you all the days of my life amen Rob the most liberating thought that God ever showed you. I was uh, a born-again believer. I knew my scriptures. I was a worshiper. But I always felt like this blockage in, in talking to people about Jesus. I always felt like this basically boils down to an intellectual debate. I believe in Jesus. You don't believe in God. I have to try and convince you. What I realized was that much better to demonstrate God's power, to demonstrate that he is real and that he cares for people. So we were in our shop one time, our famous shop with, you know, free miracles. Hi. And uh, a couple walk in, a man and wife, and he's limping. So of course we say, this, this is a shop where we see miracles. Can we pray for you? But the guy well, says, there's really no point. I'm an atheist. But we, of course, say to him, God still believes in you. So let us try. We'll pray for you anyway. Is that OK? Fine. OK, and he lets us pray. So we pray. Amen. And then we say, anything, anything changed? changed? Test it out. Test it out see what's see happened. Whoa, there's no more pain. And to his amazement, he's uh, shaking his head, the pain's gone, he's touching his toes. Um, his wife, who's standing behind him, says, See, I told you there was a God. And he's speechless. <laughs> okay, last couple of minutes. Uh, Alice and Rob pray as God directs for those watching. Okay, I'm going to start. So 
I'm going to, you know, when I was talking about Tim, everywhere we share the miracle, like when he got electrocuted and he had, he was numb and the, the tremors, every time we share that story, people are getting healed of similar symptoms. So I want to release that for everybody that's watching. If you have tremors, if you have any numbness in your body, if you have the deafness, the, the blindness, the brain damage, anything that he had, I want to release that for you right now in the name of Jesus, that you'll be healed. You'll feel, feel something happening right now. Go on, just test it out. Just If you're numb, just feel it like that. This feeling's coming back right now. Anybody who has, has any tumors or cancer, we command those to go in the name of Jesus right now. And anybody who is, you're tapped into the wrong power like Lisa was, that you just lay down your life right now for Jesus. You surrender your life to Jesus and say, I don't want to go down the counterfeit route and the occult or new age, but I want you, Jesus. So just receive him right now in the name of Jesus. Well, I want to bless you with a blessing, the threefold blessing of God. So I just pray the blessing of provision over your life. I pray that you would be so full of God, that your life would overflow with abundance and generosity to others. I pray that your life would be uh, so close to God that you'd have the blessing of wholeness, that, that your life would resonate with divine healing and that you would overflow with healing to others. And I bless you with the blessing of authority, that you'd be such a servant of God, that you would know authority against and overcome all the powers of the enemy in your own life and the lives of others. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And amens means so be it, so be it. Yeah.